Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooksburg Zoo. Let's have a look at what we did in the last episode. And you might also notice that something is a little bit different this time because the footage of looking back into what we did the last week is going to be a little bit more cinematic than it was in the past. So there is a reason for that. What you are seeing right now is the new movie camera mode. I hope it is the correct wording from the new update that is going to be released tomorrow with the Arid Animal Pack. Yes, I got early access to the Arid Animal Pack, so I'm able to show you guys right now what you can do with this new movie uh, camera mode which is really 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 great as you can see you can do such great footage of your zoos with that this is just amazing this is the best uh, update that uh, yeah for me personally that we got so far because it makes creating videos for YouTube so much easier and so much greater because you can do real zoo tours right now so um, yeah you just have to put down the path where the camera should move and then everything starts automatically and as you can see it's just amazing i love this and i hope you guys will enjoy it as well so here's the habitat that we built in the last episode which was the shared habitat for the binturong and our uh asian small cloud otters yeah that's the correct name of them as you can see, <laughs> you didn't see many animals in there, but that's the way it is. So, what we are going to do in today's episode is we are building a whole new area for Brooksburg Zoo, which is going to be called the Living Desert. Yes, you guys know the Arid Animal Pack is going to be to released tomorrow. And with that pack, we are getting eight brand new animals. One exhibit animal that is going to be the Horned Viper. I don't know the correct word of this. I'm not into those exhibit animals that much, but uh, it's a great model as well. And I hope you guys will enjoy it. And we are getting seven new habitat animals and we are going to build for one of those in today's episode so the animals that we are getting with the arid animal pack is the somali wild ass which we are going to build a habitat for in today's episode then there's the adax a great new antelope the dama gazelle which is also a very, very pretty animal and in fact only the second gazelle that we got in this game. Then there's the crested porcupine, which I'm very excited for and I can't wait to build for those. We will also see the black rhino, which we knew we were getting at some point as we saw the animal sign from the base game, I think it was. And finally it is here now. So the next one is the dromedary camel which comes also with a new feature that we got or that we get in the update tomorrow which is the spitting of animals. So the dromedary camel is going to be able to spit at guests I think. I uh, haven't seen it yet but I think I'm going to get into it in, yeah, in quite some time. And I hopefully I can show you guys the feature. So a spitting animals dromedary camel. We talked, yeah, another great species that we get with the update, uh, with the update, not with the update, but with the download content with the DLC, is going to be the sand cat, which I'm going to build for in my German series Litchfield Zoo on Wednesday. So if you want to check that out, you're free to go over to my German series as well and enjoy me building for those little kitties. I hope this was every animal. Gazelle, antelope, Somali wild ass, dromedary camel, the 
porcupine, the black rhino, and the sand cat. Yeah, that's the habitat animals. And as I said, we are going to build for the Somali wild as in today's episode. Because I was asking a very good friend of mine with what animal we should start for the living desert. And he said he wanted to see the Somali wild ass. So it was a pleasure to build for them for him. And I hope he will enjoy it as well. Uh, yeah, I'm very, very, very grateful. If I didn't say it um, in the beginning, I'm going to say it now or repeat it, that I got early access for the Arid Animal Pack for the first time ever since I started my channel. So I was very excited for that and uh, I was the happiest person in the world to get this opportunity to build, to show you guys one day before the release of the pack already what you can find in there and I hope you guys will enjoy it. So what I did first was building some scenery for the new part of this park. It's going to be a little bit different from the thing that uh, from the things that we already built but I try to stay true to the whole character of this park because I really love Brooksburg Zoo and I want to continue with this classic style uh, mixed with some modern uh, yeah architecture and I hope uh, yeah that I will be able to manage this but I wanted to build something that you see in modern zoos as well. Most of those zoos uh, that we see, especially in Europe, are not the newest, I think. Um, so they are about uh, 50 to maybe 100 years old. And so you will see this uh, classic architecture like when uh, when it all started, when uh, they started to build the zoo. Then there was World War II where lots of uh, zoos were completely destroyed or at least uh, severely destroyed and they had to build, uh, build it up anew. And um, yeah, after that those buildings in those zoos had to be renovated from time to time so they were yeah, bigger, bigger habitats for the animals were built and uh, modernized and uh, yeah, so I wanted to implement this in this zoo as well. And so I thought it makes totally sense when we build something like the living desert area because that is also something that you see in zoos, especially around Europe these days, uh, because many of those zoos have master plans. So they are going to renovate big areas, all the whole zoo and uh, building new habitats, modernizing everything. And so I thought the living desert could be something like that for Brooksburg Zoo. So we're having this complete new area that is focusing on animals that live in desert areas. And uh, yeah, so we are starting with our first habitat here for the Somali wild ass. Inspiration for this habitat was kind of uh, the habitat for the Somali wild ass that I saw in uh, Stuttgart Zoo, uh, Zoo in Wilhelma. Um, few months ago as we did our real life zoo tour there if you want to check that out just look at my channel um, for the series bake and play on tour there you can find some footage of uh, many zoos from uh, Germany uh, Austria there's going to be some of Austria also two zoos that I visited in the USA and uh, there's a lot more to come and uh, yeah, there is also some footage of uh, the zoo in Stuttgart uh, that we visited where I saw this habitat for the Somali wild ass. So there was some fencing like this um, before the habitat and there was a water area behind there and uh, afterwards the, yeah, the land area for the animals. And I thought it was really simple but very beautiful and I wanted to have something like that and um, I hope I could manage to 
making my own nice version of the habitat. And our guests that are looking at our lemurs on the other side are also uh, being able to have a glimpse to our Somali wild ass right behind the hedge where they are walking. And here I did some additional fencing because you know the hedge wouldn't keep those animals in the habitat, uh, especially not the donkeys. Um, yeah. And I'm very, very happy with the animals that we got in this pack or that you will get in this pack because they are so beautiful and we have so much ungulates and as you guys know me, I love ungulates, especially antelopes, gazelles and stuff like that. So I'm very, very, very happy for this pack. And uh, especially as we do have so many critically endangered animals in here as well. I didn't notice that in the beginning, but uh, yeah, many of them are very, very critically endangered, like uh, the Somali wild ass. There are not many of them left in the wild anymore. It's just about, uh, I think about a thousand of those are left. Uh, and also the Adex antelope, which is almost, uh, yeah, gone in the wild, or was it gone in the wild and is now being uh, back introduced into the wild? Uh, I just don't know, but they are also very, very critically endangered. And uh, yeah, the black rhino, I don't have to tell you about rhinos. I guess you guys know that rhinos are very, very endangered. So I'm very, very happy for all of these animals that we do have in here. As well as the Dama Gazelle. Not to forget about them. They are also critically endangered. And I'm also very excited to build for all of these animals. So you are going to see all of them here in Brooksburg Zoo. I think the next animal that I want to build in here and that would make totally sense and I hope you guys will like the idea is the porcupine because the porcupine would fit so great in here for the entrance area to the living desert and after that i think we are going to have a community vote again so here on youtube so that we have a little bit of a survey where you can vote for the next animal that we are going to build a habit, uh, habitat in here. But you can already let me know in the comment section which one you are most excited to see the next. Is it going to be an antelope? Is it to, uh, going to be the gazelle, the rhino, the sand cat or what animal do you want to see? I'm very very excited for that and you can also let me know which animal you are excited for the most and which animal you are going to build for in your own zoos. So here I was building a different fence and a higher fence uh, because we don't have some water behind that and I thought it would make sense if we built something like this around here to keep the guests and the animals away from each other. And the next part and yeah the next step on the first part of this video is going to lay down the ground structure for the building for the animals. I have to say in case of realism I totally effed it up. Yeah. I wanted to build something really really cool and wanted to have some kind of boxes in there like you see in stables for horses uh, for example. But yeah, you will see in a few minutes I couldn't do this correct because I think the whole building was laid down yeah just wrong from the beginning so I wasn't able to manage that and there's going to be another problem in the end uh, I kept the footage in there so you guys will see what problem it is going to be uh, which is a very funny one and uh, let me let me say it like this 
we do have to take care of our animals in here especially because when they are getting sick and uh, they need to be taken to the hospital by our vet we have to take care of them when they are coming back because they wouldn't be able to enter the habitat by themselves yeah let's say it like this you will see in the end what i mean and uh, yeah, i'm very sorry for that because usually in those episodes here in Brooksburg I try to build habitats that uh, and also interiors that do make sense in the end but I was so excited for the new animals that I didn't manage it uh, that I didn't manage it this time so I'm very 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 sorry for that but in the end it's still is a beautiful habitat and also the stable is looking really really nice. Yeah, and we're also going to have a holding pen. You can see it uh, on the left of the building. I decided we need to have something like this in here, especially for the Somali wilders. When we have babies or sick animals or we don't want to breed these animals, which wouldn't make sense because they are so endangered that we always want to have baby animals in here. Um, yeah, but if we want to separate the animals, we need to have a holding pen for those. And uh, so I decided it's time to build something like this again. Because we didn't do it in the last few videos. Um, I think we don't have something like this for uh, the Binturong and the Otter habitat. And we don't have something like a holding pen for our wild water buffaloes as well. So. Here I thought we are going to get back to this so that we will have something like this in here. Yeah, I also have to say um, a sorry for PS Vision Gaming because I think uh, PS you are waiting every episode to see me finally build the greenhouse that I was talking about, that you were such a huge inspira uh, inspiration for me. This is definitely going to, uh, to happen. Uh, because, uh, yeah, if you haven't watched the series of PS Vision Gaming, you definitely should look out for him and uh, especially take a look at him building his petting zoo area where he also built this beautiful greenhouse. Um, we're going to have something like this in the entrance area, so on the left of the entrance area that is completely empty right now. So I want to build something like a big greenhouse, a walkthrough greenhouse where we would have uh, maybe the sloth in there because I didn't build for them and maybe some other, yeah, walk through exhibited animals like the butterflies or uh, the fruit bat for example. So I think this is going to be great but right now we are going to focus on the animals of the arid animal pack. Yeah so here you can now see me building those boxes for uh, the Somali wild ass. With having the keeper gate or the entrance for the keeper on that side, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't really possible to build the boxes and make it make sense. And I also couldn't put the boxes on the other side because on the other side were those windows which wouldn't be a problem at all but we also did have the exit to the outdoor habitat for the animals so um, even now when I'm looking at the footage uh, my brain is a little bit puzzled because I just can't get it together how I could have built the whole thing that it would make sense and that it would work out. So uh, maybe I should have a look at the Okapi indoor habitat. 
because I managed to do it in there and uh, just not here. I don't know why. But yeah, as I said, my brain still is puzzled and I can't get it together so that this would work out here for the Somali Wilders. Yeah, but as I said, in the end, it still is a beautiful indoor, uh, not habitat, uh, indoor enclosure for uh, the animals, so I hope you guys don't mind it. Yeah, and here I was building a gate for the animals once again. So that in theory you could um, lock them up. Lock them up sounds, sounds a little bit wrong. Um, to keep the animals in the inside when the zoo is closed and nobody is uh, taking care of them and having an eye on them so that they don't uh, make any stupid things or get hurt or something like that. So that's what zoos usually do. I don't know how it is in the US because I've been to many zoos or some zoos in Florida and California and the climate there is uh, very different uh, there than it is in Europe. But I think also in the US uh, animals get locked in to their stables uh, for the night time and just get out there on daytime when the zoo is open. Not quite sure about that, but uh, yeah, this would make sense. But you can let me know in the comment section if there's any guys of you from the US. Uh, please let me know if it is the case in the US zoos as well. And it was a little bit weird because as I laid down the bedding for the animals, uh, the terrain just did weird things this time. Something that doesn't happen uh, when I'm lowering the bedding a little bit down into the ground, then actually you don't have the problem that the terrain is coming back up. Why it happened this time, I, I just don't know. Which was weird because it was only with the hay bedding when I laid down the leaf bedding uh, with the same height, lowering it down at the same height as the hay bedding, uh, everything went back to normal. So yeah, sometimes the game does weird things, which you don't have an explanation for. Yeah, here I was putting down some backstage stuff. And then I had the idea this wouldn't make any sense because the donkeys would be able to go to, uh, to the water pipe, uh, they could damage it, they could reach everything in there. So I decided I wanted to have something like a separation for our staff members and the animals so that everything that the staff members bring in there would be safe and Especially donkeys are very, very curious animals and um, yeah, they would just do stupid things with, uh, with all the stuff in here. So I built the separation here and here is where the problem starts. Because I built the entrance gate to the habitat where our keepers are going to enter the building. So as you can see, or as you can think about right now, this is going to be a problem because 
with the hitbox of the animals. Our keepers would be able to walk into the habitat, but the donkeys definitely wouldn't be able to. And which would be pretty much okay because I don't want the donkeys to be able to walk into the backstage area. But when you put the animals into the habitat, the keepers drop them off at the beginning. Um, yeah, just when they left uh, or entered the habitat, they drop the boxes and the animals are in there. So the problem right here is the keeper is bringing the animals in there, the animals are stuck on the staff area. And this was some stupid thing. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to get back into it and try to put the keeper gate in there where I now build my own door. So that in the end it, uh, yeah, it would be possible for the keepers to drop the animals off at the right spot. I just don't know why I didn't do it before, so <laughs> sorry for that guys, but yeah. Let's say I was too excited for the new animals and I didn't think about that, okay? <laughs> Okay, so we are close to finishing this building. Just a little stuff from the conservation uh, DLC as per usual, so nothing special about that. And then we are going to put in a roof. in a few minutes. So giving our keepers a little table where they can at least prepare a little bit of food for the animals. putting in some vegetables um, in these boxes. I don't know if it makes any sense that we got the cauliflower in here because I can't think right now of any animal that is able to eat cauliflower because isn't it something that, uh, that many of the animals can't digest? I'm just thinking about rodents, uh, so many guys of you might have had some kind of uh, rabbit uh, as a pet and I can remember as I had some rabbits, I, um, it always, I, I always was told to not give them something like, uh, yeah, like cauliflower or something like that. Because it wouldn't be great for these animals and they would get uh, diarrhea and uh, stuff like that. So I was thinking cauliflower was really a weird choice for uh, yeah for the team of Planet Zoo to give us for the animals. But uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, if there's actually animals that are able to eat cauliflower. Cauliflower, cauliflower. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Would be very interested in that. Trying to build some nice roof structure in here. And I didn't want to have a flat roof once again because we do that a lot of times and most of the times the, uh, the reason for that is that I am just too uh, too lazy to build something else because most of the times if you have a roof like this it is a lot more work and I just don't 
want to do something like this all the time but as you can see right now it looks really really pretty you can see I put in some new plants in the habitat uh, we do have some new plants in the new uh, animal pack as well we don't have that much of them but uh, yeah some of them are in there so we have some new dry bushes and stuff like that yeah but with that being said we are finished and we are going to have a look at the beautiful new animals and the habitat that we built in this episode, uh, episode now in the real time part. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did so, just leave a like, leave a comment, uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the other new episodes when we are going to build for all of the other beautiful animals of the Arid Animal Pack. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hope to see you in the next video as well. So bye guys and thanks for watching.